Hi there everyone, uh, this is Miguel Ilagin from Ilagin Photo and Video. Um, just wanted to say thanks so much uh, for tuning in uh, to this week's episode of, um, yeah, how did I take that photo? So essentially, um, I'm going to be reviewing uh, this photo here. Um, it is a photo of a singer at a uh, Christmas in the parks, Coca-Cola, um, sometime a couple of years back here in Auckland, New Zealand. So I'll be reviewing uh, items such as uh, composition, uh, f-stop, what shutter speed to use, um, and yeah, just general gear in terms of, yeah, how I got that photo. All right, so let's get into how I did the composition for this image. Uh, so essentially, um, you're looking at the image in the center. Um, subject is right in the middle. Um, so generally, when you are doing any photos, uh, such as a concert, um, we, you do have a subject. You're willing to pretty much isolate the subject from the background. So having them right in the middle of the actual frame. Uh, this helps ensure that you do get a lot of focus uh, onto the subject itself. Um, and basically it draws your eye closer to the subject. So in regards to the composition of an image, genuinely you would want to put the subject in the middle uh, of the frame. That's so that we can draw the attention of the eye closer to the actual uh, subject in question. That gives our, in terms of when the uh, person looking at the image draws their eye closer to it. And basically they're able to focus much more on the uh, actual subject in question. So generally they'll be right in the center, uh, in this case, that we were drawn in closer to them. Now in regards to the aperture settings or f-stop, uh, for an image like this where you are wanting to isolate the actual subject from the background, um, generally the rule of thumb is you'd use an f-stop with a low f number, so something like f4 or f2.8. In this case of this uh, image, um, I use an f-stop of f4. Uh, this way the subject background is still blurred out, so you still get some uh, blurred out. Um, you are able to still isolate the subject from the background, that way you're able to make them pop out from the background. So it gives a, bit, a lot more emphasis on the subject themselves. Um, you're able to focus your eyes onto the subject and essentially um, give a lot more focus uh, rather than having the background too much, uh, you know, sharp. Um, and yeah, you're able to, you know, make the subject pop out and look a lot nicer. So bear in mind when you are using your f-stops at around f4, if you're wanting the background even more blurred, uh, you can still lower the f-stop number to say f2.8 or lower. Um, just bear in mind this does make for a much more shallower depth of field. Uh, shallower just basically means anything from this point, so if you're focusing on me, um, anything behind gets more and more blurred, so more and more out of focus. So when you are using a smaller number, basically the aperture gets a lot bigger. The lens opening when it does take a photo, so say this is your f4, f2.8 basically goes like this, even larger. So you are able to get more light into the lens. Um, you're, this also does mean though that you get a lot more lens blur behind the subject. So do take care and just make sure that what you're focusing on is correct. Um, it just makes sure that uh, it is correct, otherwise uh, there be, may, may be, be parts of the face or the body that can be defocused. So just you know, have a preview of your camera uh, once you do take the photo and just make sure uh, it is focused, especially the eyes. Um, and then yeah, this makes for a much lovelier image when parts of the face are in focus, in particular this face, like the eyes. Okay, now in regards to the shutter speed you should use, um, just bear in mind that this does depend on the lighting conditions um, and how much ambient light you are getting. So the amount of natural light that is already there at the scene. Um, generally for an image like this, um, I normally use manual mode. This simply means I'm able to set the aperture, get the amount of blur I want to get, so f4. Um, once I'm happy with that, I'm getting the right amount of blur I am 
in the image uh, in the background, then I'd go into shutter speed. So uh, my rule of thumb for a scene like this, um, this was again uh, in a concert. So a lot of the natural lighting, especially if it's at nighttime, there won't be as much lighting. You know, just do, depends on what lighting is there at the stadium uh, or venue. So I would set my camera on manual and then have a look, do some test images um, of you know the shutter speed you are able to get. Um, start at maybe 300 of a second, so it's one on 300, and see if you do get enough light from that. Take a photo and do some test shots. And with the um, this is in combination with the ISO setting as well. So I'd normally start an ISO, so that's your camera's um, sensor sensitivity to light and just be careful as well. Maybe set your camera uh, onto a setting that is high grain, um, like high grain reduction. Um, Cause basically the higher your ISO, maybe at ISO 800 or 1000 or above, you can notice bits of grain on the actual image, like little brown spots there. So this is the noise. So just be careful of this, take some test shots and uh, see how you go in fa as far as using a higher ISO. Uh, I mean, my camera generally, I can shoot at about 1600 ISO. Um, that's generally what I use. Um, if you're getting a lot more light from the stadium or ambient lighting, that's great. Um, and just sort of do a play around on, say, if you're getting uh, a nice shot at about, so my rule of thumb is I would try to lower the ISO as much as I can so you get the minimum amount of noise. So you say 1000 ISO. So if you're using a ISO setting of about 800, I would say to choose a shutter speed, say 300 of a second, and see if you're getting the right amount of light into the lens. If it's a bit underexposed, uh, by all means, at this point, I'd only change the shutter speed itself, maybe 200, 100, around there. Um, but basically you're trying to get the highest shutter speed possible for that uh, ISO setting, say 1000. And if you, I would really would, wouldn't go lower than about 200th of a second because around 200, um, you're really getting some lens blur. So in those cases, uh, you also wanna make sure that your lens does have stabilization, you know, just to counteract any shake you do get. Um, yeah, just to make sure you do get the sharpest image possible. So kind of, um, play around with shutter speed and your ISO setting. Um, and you know, if you do need to go say 1200 ISO, again, just make sure your noise reduction in your camera is turned on and um, your stabilizer in your lens also is turned on. So sort of crank up your shutter, uh, your shutter speed in your camera and basically to see if the image, you know, if the amount of noise you'll get, if it's still running clear and if it's looking out nice, uh, looking quite nice in your overall image, then that's all good. So I kind of uh, quickly mentioned about using stabilizer. If your camera does have image stabilizer, please do do use it pretty much all the time, as much as you can. Uh, nowadays, I don't use a lens without stabilizer because basically I see the image results before, with and without, and pretty much with stabilizer, it's just a whole lot sharper and better. Note that um, with stabilizer, not all lenses do have it inbuilt. Uh, so some stabilizers, it, you know, the with and without, it can be maybe 200 to $300 difference. Um, personally, I really recommend it. It's really great because basically shots come out a lot more sharper. Um, so if you can get it, um, it just makes it your images like a lot clearer. So it's good to use. The next point I wanna make is use a tripod or monopod uh, for getting as much stabilization as you can when you are taking your photos. So uh, when you're at your venue, especially when you're standing up, um, you know, holding your camera there, uh, it can be very difficult, especially for prolonged periods of time uh, to keep the camera steady. Um, I can understand, you know, you do get fatigued, you can get tired, and when you're holding gear for you know quite an extended period, you know your arms, you know, it, it, <laughs> you you get tired. Um, so use a monopod when you can. Um, that way you have something to 
pop your camera onto and then when you're taking a photo your this motion becomes a lot more steady um, and you have a lot more stabilization in your images um, I always pretty much all the time now I bring a monopod um, if you don't know what a monopod is it's basically a tripod that's pretty much just got one leg so that way when you're holding the camera um, you're able to move uh, sort of on this axis um, and it's just a lot more stable so use a tripod or monopod when you can for steadier shots so I'd like to say thanks again for tuning in to this weekly video of mine um, on yeah reviewing this concert photo hope you enjoyed a lot and learned a lot and I look forward to uh, the next session with you on um, yeah how did I take this photo enjoy your day and thanks again for tuning